Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Season 5 of Hardcore Mode of F1 Manager 23 here on PS5. Right, it's round 11. We're heading to our home track, my home track, Silverstone, for the British Grand Prix. So apologies for the lack of racing last night. I was just absolutely exhausted. I fell asleep, woke up, and it was already too late to then try and start and play catch up. Uh, that's why we didn't race last night. Uh, but we will be racing tonight. Obviously, we are here and we are getting ready for the British Grand Prix. We have no new parts going on the car. Uh, although we do have a slot opening up to start a new research project or a new design project uh, coming up in a day. So let's get straight onto that. Got our new ATR period. Let's see. What was it? It was a rear wing I was going to do, wasn't it? Because we are only on a Gen 2 rear wing. Ah, I can't do a rear wing at the moment because we still have a rear wing project going through. Uh, okay. In that case... Let's go with, uh, let's see, what's my car look like at the moment? Cooling is a little bit of an issue, not horrendous, but could be a little bit better. Let's go into the warehouse and let's take a look at our parts and see which one needs the most work. So that's what our chassis looks like right now. Airflow is not great. And let's take a look at the side pod. Drag reduction on the side pods is fantastic. Engine cooling could definitely do with a bit of a boost. So could the airflow. Uh, let's take a look at the suspension. Uh, drag reduction's a little low on the order, but we've got pretty good downforce generation. Decent cooling with the uh, suspension. Airflow's pretty bad, though. 18th at the moment. Uh, hmm. Choices, choices, choices. I think we'll go with another side pod, looking at those numbers. I'm going to spend half of our hours on this, and then when the rear wing research project finishes, we'll then do a new rear wing design project with the other half of the hours. So let's jump on side pods. And let's put half of our hours onto that. go and let's look to boost drag reduction a little bit more and the airflow a little bit more and let's take the life out of the, uh, the part in that respect not really getting huge gains hmm. let's go with that so no let's try and Here we 
reset this a little bit. I want to try and improve the engine cooling, but I also want to improve the drag. Uh, sorry, the uh, the engine cooling. Uh, I want to improve the airflow a little bit as well. I think that might be the best way to go about it. It's not going to be an amazing step up. Um, I don't know how much that's going to be worth, really. not looking like it's going to be worth an awful lot. Uh, I think we'll hold off because we've got the chassis project coming up soon as well. Uh, or the chassis, um, 13 days till the chassis is done. So we'll just wait six days. We'll get the rear wing started and then we'll maybe look at doing a chassis instead of a side pod or we'll kind of, uh, deal out how that one goes how you doing baron how you doing army good to see you guys uh victor's here as well good to see you victor right uh let's jump to our inbox for a second it's telling us the uh underfloor project is done we know about that uh helipad refurb is done good 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 got the spare front wing it is the start of a new month and we have 26.2 million in the bank. That is glorious to have that much money. Uh, so that's another uh, facility getting a bump. How many front wings have we got now? Four. Okay, that's good. Uh, financial report, yes. Uh, board check-in. Board still has uh, high confidence in us. Uh, how did our drivers develop over the last month? Let's have a look. Uh, Mick gained a point in braking. He's a 92 in braking now. Ooh, that's pretty damn good. And uh, an 89 for uh, Oscar. He also gains a point in braking. Take a look at Ollie. Ollie gained a point in control and a point in adaptability. He is coming on very nicely as well. Do need to work on his cornering a little bit more, though. Let's see, what do we have him on right now? Wet track. That's not going to boost his cornering. Let's put him on pace for long run pace. That'll boost his cornering and smoothness, both of which are... Well, his smoothness is pretty good. His cornering's on the low side. Uh, adaptability reactions, or... Uh, actually, no, let's put him on, sh on short run pace. Because extra braking is always going to be good. And uh, improving that accuracy is also going to be a good thing. So, yeah, we'll leave him on short run pace for now. Uh, let's see. What else can we do? Oh, training. Yes, for the pit crew. So, we're going to go in with uh, quite a bit of fatigue. Hopefully, we'll be okay. Give him the uh, Sunday off. Get him going on the Monday. Then I'll be at 38 there. And then we won't do any training between Hungary and Belgium. And then after that, we'll go into regular training again. Okay, so our overall gains for the month, not too bad, down to 6.3% in terms of making a mistake, liking that. Those numbers are getting very close to the maximum of 91. They won't go up now until um, we get an improvement on that stat for our sporting director. That might not happen this season. We are looking at bringing in Ron Meadows for next year. That's assuming that we stay here. We may possibly be moving on. Um, let's have a look at the facilities. One of these was getting very low. Which one was it? Oh, I've got two that are getting low. Wind tunnel and CFD. And let me check this 
staff facilities, they're good. Nothing needing our attention here yet, really. That's a 15 mil upgrade. That's a 17 mil upgrade. Let's go with the CFD. Get that one done. There we go. Okay, June in F1. Aston Martin had a new chassis and they're now working on a suspension. Uh, McLaren are not doing well. And they know it. We are flying high. We are leading both the championship for the constructors and the drivers. There you see we have a nice, big, healthy lead over Max Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship. We are 66 points clear of, uh, of Max right now in the Drivers, and we are a 100 points clear of Red Bull in the Constructors. Looking very good. Looking very good indeed. Mick also quite nicely uh, ahead of Charles Leclerc now, 34 points clear. And uh, he's only 11 points behind Max, so he is closing in on second place in the standings. Ulrichs. All right. So let's double check our car. See if anyone's brought any upgrades. All looks pretty good, doesn't it? Fastest car, best acceleration, best DRS. Cornering's very nice, as you can see. Dirty air needs a little bit of tweaking, but you know that will come. Uh, cooling's not too bad. Let's take a look at uh, Red Bull. They are uh, the best in the lower medium, just better than us by a little bit on both, a very little bit in the medium. Uh, we do have a little bit of an edge over them in the high speed, but not by a lot. Uh, they do look like they've closed the speed gap a little bit uh, they've certainly closed up the acceleration gap. They are still lagging behind in the DRX by a fair amount. Uh, so, yeah, this will be an interesting race. Uh, I might try and one-stop it tonight. Not quite sure yet. Might go for the one-stop. Let's set some targets. So, uh, both cards in Q3 is the incentive very happy with that i'm going to try and get two in the top five tonight uh we're going to try and get both cars into q2 quite comfortably the finish position target the incentive is one in the top four uh we'll go for the fastest lap and then we've got a finish position streak one in the top six for two races we're halfway through that we are three down two to go in our quality streak target which is two in the top eight We are ready to have a look. Oh, what's the weather like? A little bit damp on the Friday. It's going to be dry for Quali on the Saturday and then slightly overcast, but dry on the Sunday as well. All right, we are ready to head to the British Grand Prix. Welcome and come on in to the home of British motor racing. Silverstone, where the Formula One World Championship began back in 1950. And this historic high-speed track remains a challenge for our drivers' courage and determination to this very day. Silverstone is a power circuit. It demands downforce and total confidence in the car for a driver to keep their foot planted through Sector 2, through the high-speed corners at Woodcut and at Copps, and carrying on through Maggots and Beckett's. Last round was a dream weekend for race winner Oscar Piastri, the Australian showing his mettle against the best of the best. Let's get this underway. Rick, do I see a big difference on track from 22? Yeah, there's definitely a step up. Uh, the uh, difficulty sliders now make uh, racing much harder if you pump the difficulty up um it's still a game that you can conquer 
if you know what you're doing, you can conquer it reasonably quickly, depending on which team you go with and which drivers you hire. Uh, but we're in our hardcore series here where we slapped everything up to hard and uh, threw in some extra rules as well. And it's taken us five seasons to get to this point. So uh, it's been uh, a slog and uh, we are reaping the rewards of a lot of hard work and patience and mishaps along the way to get to this season. But yeah, the racing is better. Uh, the uh, the drivers are a bit more intelligent. Um, this game is on sale right now. Uh, if you are interested in picking up a copy, don't forget there is a new version coming out. Uh, 24 comes out in the summer, probably. July, maybe August. Uh, I think it was end of July last year when it came out. And there will be a new creative team feature uh, in uh, in the new one that's coming in 24. So you'll be able to add an 11th team onto the grid of your own design. There'll be some other improvements as well, but uh, we don't really know too much about those yet. They've only kind of mentioned them, not really gone into any specifics yet. Uh, we are going to put Ollie in the car tonight, give them another run out. Uh, so we want soft tyres. Ollie, Silverstone is 17 laps for a day one run. Those settings down, let's swap out the engine parts. Might have to keep the same gearbox in the car. Uh, we can certainly go back to the older ERS of practice. And I can get away with using that gearbox for Ollie. And then we'll have to swap it back out again after FP1. Uh, let's put a setup on this car. I'm going to go with a 6 and 11. A 7, 3. 3.5 and a 0.9. There we go. Uh, for Oscar, we're going to keep the hard tyres on. Let's swap out those parts. Uh, yes, that ERS can go on. I think the other gearbox is too much. Oh, no, no, we can still use that gearbox. That's good. Uh, lovely stuff. 17 laps. Change those settings down. And let's go with a slightly different setup here. We'll go with a 5.5, an 11.5, a 9.1. Uh, a 3.25 and a 0.2. Yeah, let's try that. Evening cloud. Oh yeah, I know you can do a one stop here, Victor. I'm just, I might. I usually do a two-stop, but uh, we'll see. I haven't quite decided whether I want to break from tradition and actually go with a one-stop tonight. We have got very uh, got very good at uh, looking after our tyres. Yes, radio check. Lab, Helps sir. when you've got a car that's you know, very quick. Quick radio check. Yep, radio check. Yep, copy, same. Watch those curbs. Yeah, copy. So for those of you that um, missed it, yesterday was the Frontier Unlocked stream. They did about a 10-minute segment on the show talking about F1 Manager and the creator team. They didn't really go into too much more than we already kind of knew. Oh, I forgot about the weather. Ah, yeah, we can get away with just sticking on the slicks. 
Uh, yeah, they didn't really go into any real detail. Um, you okay? Oh, okay. Ugh, bugger. Oscar's had a moment. Car's not damaged. Tires might have taken a little knock. We're not going to see a replay, apparently, so I don't know what happened. Uh, they did show off a big selection of custom liveries that were designed. They showed a little bit of the design process without showing us the tools. They're going to get revealed at a later time and date. Um, they did mention that there are 50, 5 zero, uh, you know, custom sponsors that you can uh, negotiate with to uh, appear on your car. You can customize your uh, overalls and helmets. The balance? And they showed a little bit. Yep, everything good. Copy that, mate. How was that run? Um, they showed a little bit of, of, of that in action. Again, they didn't show us the tools. They just showed us the visual effect, you know, uh, of the changes that were being made. Uh, you get to uh, not just choose where the sponsors go, but you can also reposition them as well and resize them. That's something that uh, is a nice addition. The fact that you can actually not just say, I want the car, this sponsor on the side pod, but you can actually choose exactly where on the side pod and at what angle and at what size. That looks good. Um, I do like that. Uh, we've got feedback from both of our drivers. Let's have a look. Uh, ooh, 74%. We are definitely going to need to make some changes quickly. Uh, what else did they show? That was about it, really. I mean, they did briefly touch on what they'd already mentioned on their blog post that there's going to be engine failures introduced this year there's new dynamic cameras there's a new mentality system um and that's about all they really talked about so there's a lot more stuff still to come in terms of you know information but uh yeah we'll see Rick says, watch the YouTuber who went attack on every stint on 1 by 45 seconds. Uh, well, that depends on what difficulty he was doing on. It sounds like he was also doing the um, tire exploit, which I absolutely refuse to do. I don't see the point in trying to cheese the game. You know, uh, it just takes the challenge out of it, takes the fun out of it. But there is a, an exploit you can do where you can put the tires on the highest burn level and then control the temperatures by telling your drivers to avoid driving on curbs. It's silly. I don't really like to see it. And I refuse to use it. All right, let's make some changes. Uh, we are going to have to go to an 11.5 on the rear wing. I'm probably going to have to go to a 9.1. Possibly. Maybe an 8.2. Uh, let's have a look. Do have an 8.2 or a couple of 8.2 setups. Yeah, 8.2 uh, is not going to be enough. All right, so we'll have to go 9.1. Uh, which means we're going to have to uh, correct this down a bit more. And then... Is that enough? I don't think it is. All right, let's go with a similar setup to uh, what we've got on uh, Oscar's car. Now the front wing's looking too low. Trying to fine tune this a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, 
let's try that. See how that works out. Evening, Jonathan. Are we ready to see Max win by two laps next week? Um, I think, where are we going next week? Oh, it's Japan, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, the Red Bull's going to be very good there, I think. But uh, Ferrari uh, uh, showing some pace. I don't know if Max would have won in Melbourne, even without the brake exploding. I think, well, if he had won, it certainly would have been close. He would have had to work really hard for that one, I think. Um, that Ferrari was a very quick car. And Max wasn't 100% comfortable with the car going into the Grand Prix anyway. Before his, uh, his brake decided to uh, give up and, and, and kill itself. Japan is a different type of circuit. A lot more technical than, uh, than Melbourne. We shall see. The game doesn't punish you enough when tyres are in the red. Oh, it does if you don't use the tyre exploit. It really does. You know, um, so like I said, you know, it's highly likely from what you've described that the YouTuber you were watching was using the tyre exploit, which in my opinion is cheating. Uh, I don't like to see people do it. I actively uh, encourage people not to use it. And I... I refuse to use it myself. You know, it just it takes the whole point out of the game. You know, to to try and find the exploits to be you know as quick as possible. It defeats the whole purpose of building a team up through hard work. I mean, you basically just put in a go fast code. We are very close, just 4% away. Hmm. Let's go like that. That should hopefully be enough. Evening, Derek. Can't wait for the politics between Ferrari and Red Bulls uh, next season if they're closer in terms of overall speed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see Hamilton in uh, a proper competitive car again. And see if uh, that renews the, uh, the fighting between him and Max. Obviously, Charles is going to be in the mix as well if uh, Hamilton's close enough to beat. I mean, it could well be that um, Ferrari have a really good season next year and then they completely fall apart with the regulation changes. There's no guarantee that, you know, just because a team is dominant in one set of reg changes that they will be in the next one. Uh, 2026 will be a very interesting year with the new engine regulations, the new uh, tweaks that they're going to make to the cars. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see whether Red Bull have been able to get on top of making their own engines uh, and see what kind of performance and reliability they're going to have. They could have very fragile engines, potentially, in that first season of the new regs in 2026. Evening, Mr. Water.
be subsiding now. Copy. Balance update when you can. Balance update. All right, 95%. That is a big improvement. Still not quite there, but it's not too far off. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. Leave it at that and see what happens. So, Mick will be jumping in the car for uh, FP2, taking over now for the rest of the weekend. pretty much bang on with Oscar just need to click that toe once and that is uh, a perfect setup there the Brits are topping the timings at the moment Albon ahead of Norris Russell languishing a little bit in 11th Doesn't mean a huge amount though, when you've got a, a session that's had a lot of rain going. Uh, right, hard tyres for me. Uh, let's go with the mediums in this session. Uh, another potentially wet session. Got to fuel him for uh, 36 laps. Let's just go 38 laps. Uh, gotta change that gearbox. That will not last the session. So gearbox one is now officially done and dusted. We've made some changes. Just gonna wait and see if they work. Need to tweak the toe. I'm gonna go there. See if that works. Go with 25 laps of fuel. Send them both out. Okay, should be green now. Watch those curbs. Seven. Coming. Yeah, and we can probably get away with just sticking through the uh, dry tyres. Mix new gearbox seems to be, or better uh, gearbox, seems to be making him a little bit quicker than Oscar, so we'll let him go through. Still waiting for that feedback to pop in. Getting close though. Ninety-four. So we went the wrong way with those changes for Mick. 
Uh, but we got the right direction for Oscar. Let's call Mick in. We'll leave Oscar out. Let him finish his run. Okay, so... I go up to a six five. Guess I have to really. Uh, let's bring that back like that, and then we can correct that back to where it needs to be, which is about about there. Think. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, drop the fuel load down a bit. Get out to twenty laps. go <laughs> well this time Oscar's going to be the quicker because his car's now lighter Seems to be closing him back in again. Well, Oscar's going to be boxing in the next lap or two. There he is. Now we just need to wait for feedback on those changes we made for Mick. See if they've worked. Hopefully they have. I'd like to get this car set up properly before we head into FP3. Then I can just run to get the track knowledge up and not worry about anything else. Seven. So, almost there. We'll let him finish out the session. And then we'll make changes at the uh, checker flag. We need to get that running up a little bit more. He's did around 40% track knowledge as a minimum in this session. Check a flag. Forty four per cent, that's good. Right. What do we need to change? Hmm. I guess we have to go there. It's 
So we need to run Mick for the entire session. So we want 38 laps of fuel. We're going to run him on hard tyres in this session. Engine will just about make it. Oscar, we're going to run on softs. We're going to run him for 20 laps of fuel. Probably call him in a little bit before that. Uh, gearbox will just about make it. And let's send them out. A bit less curb. Squeezing every last drop of power out of the uh, mix engine before it gives up completely. And same with Oscar's gearbox. I really hope they allow us to resize the uh, the HUD a little bit in the next one. I'd like to make it a little bit smaller so we get more of the game visible when you've got the windows open. They do eat up a lot of real estate on the screen, unfortunately. Right, there we go. That's what we like to see. Perfect setup. Traction was feasible. Copy that. And that is Oscar done. He's finished with practice. Now we just need to get mixed track knowledge up. I think have we won this race. Let's have a look. No, we haven't. I think we came second last year memory serves it'd be really nice to win Silverstone we certainly got a car that's capable this year it is going to come down to strategy once again Norris is looking quick have McLaren brought a big upgrade here? How is he that much faster? Oh, no, Leclerc's just popped in a strong time. Mind you, Leclerc's on mediums at the moment. He might have set that time on softs. But still, it's uh, it's a quick time. How's the championship going? It's going very well. We're 100 points ahead of Red Bull going into today. And um, what was it? 66 points ahead of Max in the drivers. So uh, another strong performance here tonight can uh, start to put a bit of a stranglehold on both championships. And there we go, Mick is done, so let's call him in.
And that is practice for the British Grand Prix finished. Yeah, just two tenths off Leclerc. That is a uh, pretty quick time for Lando Norris there. Magnussen's up there again. Gasly. Bottas is up there. Ooh. Mercedes found a bit of pace. We won't really know for sure until we get through qualifying. So, our drivers are prepped. Mix just... And I do mean just into the uh, high confidence window there. He is still having a bit of uh, argy bargy with his uh, engineer at the moment, which is why his confidence isn't quite as high as it could or should be. But uh, let's see how we do in qualifying. Will practice pay off for the drivers? Well, we're about to find out in qualifying. The high-speed corners at Silverstone are a great challenge for the cars and drivers. The technical sector one rewards strong mechanical grip, while high-speed aerodynamic efficiency will come into play in the final two sectors. Now, there's been a bit of talk lately about Oscar Piastri. Karun, how's he been doing? I'll say this, it's always a pleasure seeing a confident driver take to the track. Being in the right frame of mind is a real advantage. Good point, Karun. Let's get on with qualifying. Very good point, Karun. Why is it taking you four seasons to make that? <laughs> to make that point. <sighs> right. Get the good bits into the car. So, we're going to be running... Engine number two on both cars tonight. And ERS number two. That gearbox is still good. Engine number two. ERS number two. And gearbox number two is still good. There we go. So we're going to probably have to do two runs and let's send them out coming out early again so we'll have an instant comparison with uh, one of our main rivals there he is in the background for sure also making his way onto the track Valtteri coming out as well. I do want to see what kind of pace Valtteri's got because he did look quick in that final practice session.
Mick slightly quicker than Oscar in the first sector. And better braking stats is uh, certainly paying dividends right now. Oscar's better cornering stat might come into play. Oh, we've got a slow car in front of us. Is that going to hold us up? I don't think so. One twenty-five three and a one twenty-five two, very close. Okay, so normal in lap procedures from here, please. Here comes Charles Leclerc. Run switch delta, stay negative. And he is three tenths slower. Yeah. All right. Very curious about Valtteri. I think we are one and done in this session, based on those times. There are only three on the board, so it's not a done deal yet. Ferraris are coming out. can Valtteri put on the board? That's not bad. It's only three tenths off Leclerc. It's not too bad. Joe's out there on an outlap right now. Here comes Ocon across the, the line. He's quicker than Ocon. But uh, we'll wait to see what Norris can do. Albon goes seventh, and that's a very bad time. He must have been held up. So let's attack the box, please. Uh, stop on the box, wait for two seconds, and go to P1. Still waiting for Norris and Verstappen to make a move. There's Joe. Which of the Ferraris is uh, coming up first? It's Perez, just starting his flying lap. Russell just going to Maggots now. Okay, so we've got a Williams getting a slipstream off the back of George Russell here. Nope, the Williams just finished its lap. That was Magnussen. Decent time from Magnussen. He also looked pretty quick in final practice. He's just behind Valtteri. Diving into the pits, that's probably Albon. Yes, it's Albon. And I don't think Russell's going to have a, qu a great lap here. That's a very good time from Perez. Yeah, I think George Russell's been held up with some traffic. 
go for that. He goes up to P9. Long way off, though. Still no sign of Norris or Verstappen. Joe goes P8. Three tenths slower than Valtteri. Three and a half tenths slower. And Russell goes P5. So if he did get held up, it wasn't by much. Ferrari looking a little quick tonight. Right, here comes Norris, finally making his way out of the pits. Genuinely curious to see what kind of pace he's got. As Gasly goes into P10. Still no sign of Max. We are halfway through this session. Sainz is on an outlap, and here comes Max, finally chugging out of the garage. Caught out by Joe. No, nope, Joe gets into the pits. Out of the way. And that's a good time from Science. Four tenths off. Norris about to start his flying lap. Just pulls over to let uh, Stroll through. Porsche, 1.39 seconds off into 15th. Stroll crosses the line and goes P3, just a tenth off us. So we've done enough to get through, but it's definitely going to be a tight qualifying in the later stages. In Q3. Uh, Stroll getting in the way of Norris here. So not a good start to the lap for Norris. Keep an eye on his time, but we'll switch our focus over to Max. There is going to be time for another run for everybody. Russell going out again now. Track will be gradually getting quicker all the way through as well, so this could put him on the front. Evening, Anthony. Uh, yeah, there was no stream yesterday. I, I was asleep. <laughs> I was just very, very tired. I've been not been sleeping well these last few days. Uh, I've been sleeping for like an hour and a half, two hours, waking up, getting back to sleep for another hour, two hours, waking up again. Just, yeah, I just. I was just exhausted by uh, yesterday afternoon and I even fell asleep before the uh, Frontier uh, unlocked stream so I had to watch the, uh, the segment back later at half past ten at night when I woke up again. And that is a very quick time from Max. 125-0, so we are going to have real competition for pole position tonight, by the look of it. Uh, was the stream any good? Uh, I didn't see the whole stream. Uh, they just did a 10-minute segment on uh, Creator Team, which didn't really 
give too much away. Um, they're going to talk about it in future unlocks uh, as the uh, as each month ticks by. So uh, I would imagine every month now we're going to get some more news about F1 Manager in the unlock streams. But the uh, the 10 minute segment is available to watch on YouTube. We are going to speed time up for the final runs. We're going to stay in the garage. Uh, where did Norris come in the end? Oh, he got up to 10th. So despite that bad start to the lap, he still put in a decent time. But all of a sudden, Bottas's time not looking so good. Let's... Uh, see what he does on uh, this flying lap he's going to have a little bit of traffic to contend with at some point on this lap you scored points yet Anthony No improvement in the first sector for Valtteri. That's a worry for him. He's up in the middle, though. He's now on the bubble. As Porsche improves up to 14th. As Porsche done. Not a safe time if McLaren, uh, sorry, if the Mercedes can find a bit more. And Porsche is definitely not safe. But expect Gasly to maybe find a little bit more as well. Bottas does not improve. So Bottas in danger now. Anyone improving in the bottom, you know, the bottom five will knock out Valtteri. No, here comes his teammate starting his flying lap. Ferrari should peel out of the way, there he goes. Who's still on a flying lap? Uh, Joe and Gasly. Magnussen. Norris is behind us on track. He's on a flying lap as well. Sainz also potentially at risk. <coughs> He's just knocked out Valtteri. Oh, Gasly has finished and has not improved enough. So it's down to Joe. See if he can get through for Mercedes, but he's got to find a lot of time. He's got to find about half a second. I don't think he's got that in him. Or four tenths. Oh, he has. He's put in a very good time. So Porsche gets knocked out. And I think that is pretty much it now. Stroll goes P2. Here comes Leclerc. Norris about to cross the line. Norris goes P6. You 
finished in P4. Well done. It doesn't improve. All right, well done. We're through P10. Keep it up. Did you say P10? We're fourth. All right, so at the end of Q1, we are saying goodbye to Vashor, Giovinazzi, Gasly, Bottas, and Porsche. We do have a uh, three-place penalty for Esteban Ocon tonight. Let's do his uh, collision in Austria. Move on to Q2. I'm not sure if one lap will be enough this time. Start the flying lap any moment. Coming out of Stoke. Clear track there we go. Off so we to the races we go. As Max is coming out and he's going to come out he right in front of us. Bastard. Ah, expect potential hold up. But catch him in Brooklyn's uh, it's a terrible place to catch him Oscar slightly up in the first sector this time ah, I knew that was going to happen Oscar's lap is ruined I think Mick got away with it Definitely going to have to go again. It's going to be an awful middle sector for Oscar. That's cost him, let's say, two seconds, if not more. Basically, whatever the gap is between our two drivers, that and an extra tenth or two. So 125 zero. Yeah, one and a half seconds. Ah, less than I thought. I thought that was going to be at least two seconds. Once it's delta, stay negative. Pull the car on the way in. Perfect. So uh, definitely need to run again. Get them back to the garage. Send them out again.
Track's a little busy, but I want to get this second running quickly. Magnussen behind us. He's on an inlap now. Bit of traffic in front, actually. We are uh, behind Jerez, who is right on the back of a Red Bull, but the Red Bull has done its flying lap. So that's on an inlap. Don't think we're going to get pulled over. Or oh, actually, Hajar is coming through. That's potentially going to... Mm, but it's out of sequence slightly. There is Hajar. Oh, Hajar's going to get held up horribly here. We've lost the toe to the Ferrari, or have we? Uh, if anything, we've maybe got it back. Uh, Williams is going to peel out of the way. There we go. Oh, and the Ferrari was on an in-lap as well. So that must have been Russell, not Perez. We're going to expect some bunching. So, good to go. so now we're going to catch her jar, and hopefully he's not going to hold us up again. We got held up in the first run. Need a good time here. That's why we sent Mick out again. Give Oscar a slipstream. So that we can try and get both cars through without having to run on new tyres. The jar moves out of the way. Perez in front of us is also on a flying lap right now. So uh, no issues there. No improvement in the first. Tyres are a little worn, so not surprising. Will be a much better middle sector, though. And should be a better final sector as a result of the slipstream here. I don't think this is going to be front row worthy, but hopefully it's enough to get through without having to run again. It's not. Still in P1. We are going to have to send Oscar out on new tyres. That won't be good enough. Copy. We leave him in the garage, he will get knocked out. That's a good lap, mate. And we need to cool the PU on this inlap. Okay. That complicates okay. things a little bit. Identical time to Ocon, but Ocon set it first. All right, got Max coming out. Come on, get those tyres going. There we go. We'll get out behind Max. Leclerc is... Oh no, it's, it's, that is Leclerc. Um, Max is just starting his flying lap now. Copy. 
Well, we've got a faster car than the Red Bull. So, theoretically, we should get uh, a monster slipstream down the hangar straight. But if we don't go purple in the final two sectors, well, certainly in the, yeah, in the final sector, then there's something that's very wrong. Max goes through. I think we might be a little bit too close. Yeah, we are a bit too close. It's not great. Hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. Max actually in danger right now. He is uh, on the cusp. improves to uh, fastest and that now puts Oscar on the edge so gap ahead is good push when you're ready so we need a clean lap I am a little concerned that we are slightly too close to the Red Bull A concern about traffic. Actually, with us being this close, it could go either way with traffic. If uh, Leclerc gets through unscathed, then we should be able to follow through unscathed as well. If we're a bit further apart, not so much. But if Leclerc gets held up, we get screwed over because we are too close to uh, move over. Pass Max on the run into uh, Maggots. There we go. No improvement in the first. A little concerning. Should be mighty from now on though. Purple in the middle sector. Should have done enough. And there we go. Yeah. Tenth quicker than uh, Leclerc. But Red Bull ominously fast here tonight. So we're going to say goodbye to Magnussen. Ocon, who improves up to 11th. It's not enough. Uh, we're also going to say goodbye to Maloney, Joe and Hajar. Six tenths separating the top ten. Hopefully, Oscar can stay with Mick, despite the uh, tyre being much more worn. Some good work on the brakes at the front side. I would like him to have been a little closer than that. See if we can just slow Schumacher down a little bit on the warm-up. 
I don't think we can. Watch those curbs. Yeah. Not close enough. All right, so plan B. We think we can lean on the tires more. Can't we? Use everything. Keep your pace up. Hmm. Still not convinced we're close enough. We'll just see what we can do with uh, Oscar on this lap and then uh, we'll uh, put on those other tyres that he's got. Oh, he's actually quicker in the middle. I think Mick might have been held up a little bit there by Norris. Five, eight. Yeah, he did get held up. Not a great time from Oscar either. Save fuel. Yeah. So take it easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. We need to do what we can to recharge the battery. <coughs> Copy. Hopefully we can repay the favour to Norris. Screwing us over there. Pints and Albon, one and two right now. Those times aren't amazing either. We're looking at 125 zeros, maybe 124s. You know, the high 124s for pole, I think. And I'm wondering if the dirty air is causing more problems than it's... Uh, than the slipstream is is bringing in terms of benefits. So I'm going to actually try and space our drivers out a little bit for their final runs. See if we can get them running in clean air and hope that that's going to be enough. Oops. Not an ideal exit onto the hangar straight uh, for Norris there, but he didn't get held up too badly. I have just about got time for a two-lap run, which I didn't think I was going to have. I am going to go new tyres for both drivers. We are trying to walk one stop tonight, I think, so we can afford to uh, wear out these tyres a little bit.
There we go. A little bit of clean air for so both drivers. Let's turn that off. Okay, Not a great confidence level, but yep. that should hopefully be hitting peak for the second lap. Schumacher not far away. One twenty five zero for Leclerc. And Max go quicker. Norris definitely got held up there. Look, a one twenty a one point two four seconds slower. Very close to his sights and Russell. It's three hundredths of a second between them. Here comes Max. And it's good enough for P2. He's two tenths slower. And it's not a great lap for Perez. He's nearly two seconds off pole right now. Even Daniel. There is Oscar getting about ready to start his flying lap. There is Mick in the background. Gap ahead is good. Push when you're ready. We should hopefully have a clean lap for both drivers here. Take advantage of this clean air. Okay, let's go. Oscar may possibly catch up to the back of uh, the Ferrari and the Red Bull there, but Mick won't. It's an improvement for Oscar in the first. And for Mick as well. Mick just sneaking into peak confidence now. I think Mick is probably our best effort, uh, our best bet for pole position tonight, just because his confidence level is higher. It does make a difference. Middle improvement for Oscar there. Ferrari and the Red Bull now into the pits and out of the way. Mick comes up to the splits and goes purple in the middle. Mick is cooking. Oscar's just percolating a little at the moment. Here he goes. And goes P2. Does a 125-0. He is less than less than a tenth behind Charles Leclerc. He's got a cool down lap before he goes again. Mick goes fastest. By 54 thousandths of a second, a 124.9. Very close. Very close indeed. Leclerc is out behind uh, Mick on the track, but it's not close enough to get a, ben a slipstream benefit, which is good. Max still in the garage. Second Ferrari is coming out now. That is Perez. And Max now making his way onto the uh, onto the track. Stroll's on a flyer right now, so he's not going to be a factor for us. Here we go for flying lap number two. The track is clear. Norris and Russell are in front and on flying lap, so we've got clear air in front of us. Just 
Charles Leclerc crossing the line. Oh, sorry, starting his flying lap. Max is there right now, so he may well get in the way. out of the way of uh, Norris and Russell he's got this horrible feeling he might possibly hold up Oscar through Stowe DRS disabled DRS disabled mix out of battery oh that's not good If Oscar's out of battery as well, then he's not going to get onto the front row. And we are getting held up. Damn it. So Oscar does not improve. I don't think Mick's going to improve either with no battery. doesn't can Leclerc take pole from us yes he can stroll is p3 ah that's not good so I think it's just max science isn't going to be quick enough I don't think he's not p7 Albon in P9. Perez is on a flying lap. Here he comes. And Perez improves his time but stays P10. So, what is Max going to do? We're going to have to fight hard for the pole. Sorry, for the win tonight. It's a very quick boys tonight. It's not going to be a walkover like it has been in the last few races. Max does not improve. So Max stays in P6 behind Norris. Well, well, well. Very interesting. So, second and fourth, it's not ideal, but it's not horrendous. Uh, Leclerc in front is out of the running for the title at the moment, uh, but obviously can score some big points for Red Bull in the constructors. Uh, Lance is nowhere in either championship, so he's a bit of a spoiler. But uh, if we can get ahead of him, then it will make a tough car to get through for Max, hopefully. Well, there's nothing quite like it. Welcome along to race day. Silverstone is certainly a circuit rich in Formula One history. From Giuseppe Farina winning the first championship race held here in 1950, right through to Lewis Hamilton's 2008 masterclass on racing in the rain. And the weather is sunny here today, apart from a few clouds. Let's hope they remain scattered on the horizon. So 52 laps of the British Grand Prix await the drivers, but there can only be one winner. Who's it going to be? Okay, so we are going to one stop tonight. But based on how we go with our tyres, we may possibly switch onto softs instead of hards all depends on safety car as well <clears throat> so we shall see i mean uh that is normally a quicker um or at least very very close not quite there because we don't have two sets of brand new softs but if i were to put on another set of mediums 
then I could go very aggressive on the first stint. And then have plenty of tyre to play about with on the middle stint as well. Not going to do that though. We are going to commit to the one stop. Uh, so let's go with that. We're going to remove that. And we're going to remove that. And just in case we are able to really stretch the tyres. We're looking at that as a possibility it's uh, a second slower but only a second and we may be able to save our tires even more than that we'll see so strategies are in we're going to go with extra fuel so that we can push the car but not the tires uh Let's try not to push them off the line for more than a couple of corners. And we are ready to go to the race. How you doing, Fabrice? How you doing, uh, Clark? Good to see you guys. Go to the grid. The British Grand Prix is nearly upon us. The drivers composing themselves on the grid ahead of 52 laps around Silverstone. Mick Schumacher, a composed figure, approaching this one. They're in second place on the grid, but that could so easily change in the first few seconds after lights out. This should certainly be a good one, folks. Anticipation is high, and the drivers are ready for this. The British Grand Prix. And it slides out, and away we Looks go. Looks like a decent start for Schumacher. Couldn't quite get alongside. We've got a yellow flag. Oscar has moved up a place. I was off there. That might be debris. And it's a safety car. Now, who is that? Now, that looks like Lando Norris. So, it looks like Norris and Verstappen might have had a coming together. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, and then Max... And then, oh, man. That's a huge crash. While all that was happening, the crew in the garage could do nothing but watch on. How many cars are out? It's a red flag. Woo! Red flag, red flag. Oh yeah, that's Max at fault there. So Max is out. <laughs> that's glorious. I'm going to switch onto the hards. And then if we can stretch the hards, maybe we can go from hards to softs. We'll keep that in our back pocket, but if it doesn't work, then we can always go back onto a brand new set of mediums if the tire wear isn't looking so good. Pretty close. We're playing by ear. 
The restart is moments away as the race continues. It's lights out and away we go. Now we got a massive amount of fuel. We can push more. Yeah. Oh, damn it. They swapped. And now they're going to swap again. God damn it. No, uh, it's not. Like, this is why I hate the fact that you can't change driver commands on a red flag. You have, you know, Ah, that's terrible so we've let Leclerc scamper away he's on mediums yeah this has not gone well and our car is so heavy right now because we put extra fuel on to push in the first stint and now we've just taken another three kilos on top of that And we've got this weird background music. There we go. It's gone now. So Leclerc's going to scamper away. There's nothing we can do to stop him. All I can do now is try and make sure that my drivers stay together. So we might have lost the win on this one. It's still a long way to go, but at the moment it's not great. But if we can at least consolidate the rest of the podium, I'll be happy with that. I'm wondering if it's better to let Russell through, use his pace, and really protect these tyres. We might have to go uh, hards to mediums here. DRS enabled. Maybe I should have put softs on. Norris down in 13th with a penalty. Is he the only one who's got a penalty? He's the only one with a penalty. And we are already three and a half seconds behind Charles Leclerc. Yeah, he's gone. That car is so fat with fuel right now. Being where we are on the hard tyres means we can pretty much sabotage all the cars behind us up to Valtteri in terms of tyre wear. Let's go recharge on. Oh. Need to defend that. Okay. Stroll throws it alongside George Russell and takes the place from him.
we can just focus on charging the pack. Yeah. We know Stroll is pretty quick here today, so if he gets through, he gets through, and then we can try and maybe see if he can hunt down Leclerc or at least keep the gap more stable. I'm just wary of getting overtaken very early into this and losing driver confidence. that our drivers aren't going to do anything stupid. They were very well behaved in Austria. Hope they're well behaved here again. Oscar's going to get overtaken by Stroll. Doesn't have the DRS, Stroll does. It's okay, as long as we don't lose to the Ferrari as well. Keep pushing. This means Stroll will pick off Mick. And then we can try and tuck him behind Stroll. coming together in turn one between Verstappen and Norris Norris turned in Verstappen uh, hit Verstappen they both went wide Verstappen came back on the track and uh, took out another two cars <laughs> and well another three cars and brought out a red flag It's not the biggest, um, well, it's not the you know the biggest crash we've seen on lap one. That was uh, back when we started on Barcelona on hard tyres, and uh, yeah, got absolutely smashed to pieces. I think that was either season one or season two with McLaren uh, with Mercedes. I think it was season one. Right, Stroll's pushing, and we should be going with him. You can push more. Focus on getting the pack up. 
Yeah. Uh, if we can just balance our battery carefully, we can get back onto stroll without dropping Mick in the process. It'll be tricky to do. Yeah, that a little bit too quick for us. thing we can do now is just keep an eye on our tyres. I'm not sure what compound to go on to. Probably should have stayed on the mediums. Just put fresh ones on and stuck with the original plan of looking after them while still being relatively quick and then going on to softs. burning some of this extra fuel off way too much We can uh, start leapfrogging each other again. We might have a chance to uh, close them back before our tyres lose too much grip because then it'll allow me to try and protect them a bit more. Oh, we've got a yellow flag. Gasly running wide. and they need to be watching those track limits. I saw Clearly, Norris had slowed down a bit. That was a little reason why he backed off a little. I think Norris has got some, uh, he's carrying some damage on that car. I'd be amazed if he's not, <laughs> let's be honest. Overtake is available. Recharge on, please recharge on. Stroll is dropping away. We are matching him. Pretty much. Down to about a hundredth of a second.
A little bit of battery in mixed car, so we'll use that now. As we ride on board with Oscar. Let's see if we can focus on recharge, please. Oscar's going to get the DRS. And didn't get the chance to use it. Ah. But Mick into peak confidence now. We are getting a net gain by in, in confidence boosts by swapping our drivers like this. Which is why Mick is all the way up in peak. Oscar will get close to that when he gets back in front of Mick again. Mick will probably drop a little bit. Might just drop out of peak confidence, but it'll be close. When you consider that... Uh, you know, we were just a little over basic level confidence before Stroll started getting past us. There we go. He's still just in peak confidence. And Oscar is now right on the edge of that. This is where having engineers with an insanely high uh, confidence boosting stat really comes into its own. Oh, God, they hit each other. God damn it. All okay? Yeah, I'm good. And it was Mick Schumacher involved. Not a lot of wiggle room here, and you can see how the cars come together, mm. and that won't do their confidence any good. Oh, that's going to kill Oscar's confidence. Yeah. Charge on, please. Copy. Oh, God, and Mick's got a penalty for that as well. That's ridiculous. We see collisions like that between the AI all the time. It's always no penalties given, you know, racing incident. As soon as one of our drivers is involved, penalty for us.
not sure if we lost any damage to our tyres. I didn't see what it was right before the incident, so I can't say for definite, but I wouldn't be surprised if we lost a little bit. Shaw's in. Getting off those softs. At least we don't have any damage to the car. On either car. Russell's going to slot through. Okay, recharge on. Come on. Makes the race even more competitive. It was already going to be a competitive race, you know. With Stroll and Leclerc out in front, and us having to hunt them down. This is a, a circuit where it's tricky to do that. Sides back. Can't lose touch with George. Got to stay with him. Luckily those mediums are starting to slip a little bit. We're not too far behind though. I think we did lose a little bit of tyre wear. Nothing too substantial. Germanazzi into the pits. Another soft tyre runner getting rid of his tyres. Just Norris left. Still on softs. He's going again. And that's medium tyres, so it's a two-stop for Germanazzi. burned off about three kilos since the restart so we will get rid of all of this fuel but it's going to take a while yet and meanwhile Russell is not laughing quick enough
but we need to try and make a move. And you are free to use the energy when you want. Yeah. Need to repair that confidence damage. Let's go recharge on. Copy. Bring the pack up. Yep. Copy. Overtake is available. Yeah, copy. not going to break away. Damn it. No more DRS. <laughs> to recharge on, please. <laughs> We've got mixed confidence pretty good again. Nothing else, we should hopefully have a little bit more pace at the front of this little train now. Keep charging with Oscar, try and uh, pick off sights in a lap or two. There's Maloney boxes. It's the first of the medium runners. Norris is still out there on those uh, softy, might box a slap. Possibly. No, he's going again as well. Not a bad stop for sight there uh, for uh, Haas there. Penalty for Mick is going to complicate things. New fastest lap for Stroll, looking to try and hunt down Charles Leclerc. We just don't have any kind of pace like that on these tyres. Six. Norris finally boxes. So what's he going for? He might go for the one stop. He's going hard, so he's one stopping. Serving his five second penalty. Oh. 
was a 10 second penalty. Stroll has caught the Claire. So Stroll could do me a favor in the championship by beating Leclerc tonight. in a position to uh, make a move with Oscar, try and get past Sainz. Let's see if we can catch him coming out of uh, Luffield here. Go through Cops. Oh man, we are 8.4 seconds behind now. We are bleeding time while we're having to fight uh, fight off a stroll boxes. As we're fighting off Russell, we are losing a lot of time. I'm going to try and encourage Russell to complete the overtake. It's hard tyres for Stroll, so he's one stopping. Where's he going to come out? He gets out in front of Gasly. do now is just charge the battery the mediums are going to be boxing soon I think sites might box if not this lap then next lap Russell's got an extra lap or two in him Uh, Mick got a penalty for a collision with Oscar as Leclerc boxes to try and cover off Stroll. Sites and Russell have stayed out. Decent stop, hards to the end. Albon has caught up to us. That's how much our pace has dropped off. The Albon's now on right on us. Oh, I wonder if they're going to double stack Sainz and Albon. That'd be an interesting call. Feeling Russell might box this lap. He'd like to try and get in front of Sainz eventually as well. Yeah. Oh, we just lost the DRS to both. 
Ah, that's clumsy. Should just about hold off sights. Who is staying out? get past Russell who may well be boxing she had a battery again with uh, Oscar Science has dropped off. So there's a chance for us to jump both of these cars here. Mick into first, Oscar into third. With a confidence boost before these two box. Let's go recharge on. Let's push, come on. And there we go, Science is in and Albon's in, so they are going to double stack them. They see Perez coming in as Joe as well behind, it's going to be busy in the pit lane here. Tire conditions good, we can push a bit more. Copy. Not a bad stop for Science, but Albon definitely got held. Paris has closed the gap. We are going to have to go plan C now. Go medium tires. There goes Russell. Have a look. So Leclerc is currently in fifth and he's nearly four seconds behind Stroll. Russell's going to feed out quite a way behind them. comes out behind Bottas who is yet to stop but he should get the DRS here <laughs> he does is he close enough eyes on up to temperature just yet 
They're not. Alright, so. Has Mick done enough? Well, and actually, no, he hasn't done enough because he's got the penalty. So Mick's going to come out behind Russell and probably behind Sainz. Maybe just in front of Albon if he's lucky. There's Leclerc. Two point three second stop. It's not too bad. We're out behind Albon, but we are in front of Sites. So we're behind sides, but we we're in front of Perez and Albon. So yeah, that's that's worked out nicely. So Oscar is on target to come out in front of Russell. Just maybe so he should come out in front of Valtteri. It'll be very close. Need a good stop. Copy that. Bottas is boxed. All right, Valtteri's boxed. That takes a little bit of pressure off. 2.1 second stop. That's beautiful. Just what we needed. Watch the pit exit. Can we get out in front of Russell? Not quite. But you should get DRS off the back of him. Slow now. Copy. Overtaking is available. Copy. And that saved us from getting overtaken by Sainz. Schumacher is now under orders not to attack his teammate. <laughs> Still going to be vulnerable to Sainz. I think we might be quick enough. We are. Do everything you can, mate. Oh. You try and throw it up the inside. We've got tyres and battery. And we've got a slipstream on Russell. Let's get a fastest lap in here. Evening Juice. What have you missed? Um, a very strong performance on Austria. A very strong performance at uh, Canada. A, an even stronger performance at Barcelona and an even stronger performance last week at Monaco. Uh, not going quite so well tonight. We didn't get past George. That is annoying. Did go purple though.
purple again and now we're getting a tow as well off the back of a shore it's gonna be a mighty fast lap sweet did a good job No more energy for now. Yep. There we go. A 128 one. Five oh, recharge on. We need to focus on the energy now. Gotta make sure Russell doesn't jump us. We should be good. We can just focus on charging the pack. What am I gonna do? Uh, I haven't decided yet because the regulation changes are pretty minimal at the end of this season. Uh, it's just a five percent loss on all parts. Uh, so. The cars are going to remain pretty much unchanged. You know, it's effective with every single uh, part having a 5% reduction across the board. It's effectively no no changes to the regulations. You know, it's not like, you know, downforce is getting hammered really hard or, you know, in, uh, you know, in particular areas. Or, you know, the big regulation changes we had at the end of season three. So, I mean, if we have a monster car at the end of this season, we're going to probably have a monster car next season as well, which means the championship, if we win comfortably this year, which at the moment we're on target to do, we may well walk it even easier next season. So, I don't know, maybe, it's still in the back of my mind, but maybe we change and uh, resurrect Mercedes, who are in abysmal form right now. I'm guessing all of their facilities are in the toilet right now in terms of uh, wear rates, etc. It's going to be a massive restructuring job there. Need to focus on getting the pack up. All right, so sure should uh, box. Oh, he's gone wide. He's gone very wide. Lovely stuff. And he is boxing. You've done a good job. There we go. We've got a little bit of extra battery out of him. And we got the extra confidence, so we're at maximum level of confidence now. Schumacher is trying to move up over Perez and does so so we need to consolidate that now with some battery Maloney's going to be boxing in a few laps. See if we can catch him before he does. We might, might have just dropped Perez. I'm not, nope, he just snuck in, but that'll save him from Albon. He will be out of range by the time we get to the next DRS zone. Okay, we took a second out of Maloney on that last lap. 
And there we go, we've got the gap we needed. Recharge on. Albon's got through. Heinz and Russell are getting pulled along at uh, Oscar's pace. I do need to look at breaking them where I can. Don't really have a lot of battery at the moment. I'm going to use it here. Use energy. Try and break away before the next zone. because otherwise Mick's never going to catch him. We didn't get the drop here, but we should have it by the time we get through this DRS zone to the next one. And there we go, we've got one and a half seconds now. That's more than enough. Focus on bringing the pack back up. So now, Mick should be able to start closing that gap. We're at the bottom of the pack that we're aging. Come on. Albon has caught me. Don't really want to drag him along as well. He's too close, I'm not going to drop him. Maybe if I'm lucky. And my lonely boxes. Lean on the tyres. So that'll be mediums for Maloney, I think. It'll also probably be a terrible stop. Oh, it's softs. He must have gone mediums at the start. I wonder if he went mediums and then soft, soft, soft. Go have a look. I am curious. Now he started. Yeah, he stayed on the same mediums at the start. Uh, so yeah, just a regular two stop. All right, let's check Oscar's pace. 128.3 on that last lap, but that was a, a lap where we were pushing a little bit to break away from Sainz and Russell. Let's see what we do on this one. Mick has also had a lap where he's pushing a little bit, but the gap has come down to the cars in front. We've now stretched away from Albon, pulled out in almost a second on this lap. since we stopped pushing so we've definitely got pace on these tyres 15 laps to go we are 8.5 seconds off stroll right now Oscar does a 129.2 which is definitely quicker than the cars we're chasing Mick does a 129.1 half a second quicker than the cars that we're chasing so he will catch them. There is Leclerc in the distance. He just saw Stroll heading through Brooklands.
Oscar's confidence is still mighty. Mix isn't too bad. If I can get him onto the back of Sites and Russell and then get him past them, his confidence will go all the way up to the maximum. <laughs> Gold is a 130.2, a 129.9 for Charles. 129.2 for Oscar. Another second taken out of the lead. Seven and a half seconds. It's doable. If we can keep this kind of pace up, it's doable. Ah, Maloney takes the fastest lap from us. We haven't got... Well, I haven't got the battery. Getting closer. And he took two tenths out of sight, that lap. But I don't know if uh, Sainz got past Russell. If these two are swapping places all the time. And that's going to speed them up. If they stay squabbling like that, and going defensively through the corners, it's going to slow them down. Go. It's a bit more like it. Got a little bit of tire wear to play with, but not a huge amount. Getting some extra battery in the car so that when we make a move on these two, we can push past the pair of them. Think about looking off this time where we need to, to protect the uh, temperatures in that dirty air. Oscar is slowing down a bit compared to uh, the front runners. We are now out of spare fuel. Lift at coast 12. Going to use that spare tyre now to get onto the back of Charles with what little battery I've got left. Where you can. I think fourth might be the best we can do with Mick tonight. red flag now would be glorious with those new soft tires waiting oh there is a crash a collision between Sainz and uh, Russell there 
Bree? Don't think we got caught up in that. That's a little bit of wing damage there. For George. The team glued to the monitors and watching their hopes crumble away. What has that done to tyres? Might have hurt Sice's tyres a touch. I'm not sure. I don't think it has. I think tyre wear is unaffected. You watch this be a, a no penalties given look. Yep, yeah, see? We had an, a similar incident between our own two drivers. No damage at all. Maybe lost a little bit of tyre wear. Instant penalty for one of our two drivers. Overtake is available. Copy. Here we go, we're past George. Ten laps to go. And we're through. And that is confidence absolutely maxed out. Got to get on to Leclerc. If I have to really protect the tyres and then settle for second, then I'll do that. But I've got to get on to him. This might be a fastest lap attempt here for Mick. I think I've got enough left in the tyres to wrestle it away from Maloney, but we're in with a chance. We've just gone purple in the middle. You can use energy. So close to the back of Oscar. Uh, to, sorry, to the back of Charles. It is the new fastest lap. And Leclerc is pushing to try and catch Stroll. Oh, this is going to be a three-way fight for the win. Mick's not going to get on the podium. Not unless one of those two in front has a whoopsie. Leclerc is pushing so hard right now. It's making it impossible to catch him. <laughs> Please. Mix already three and a half seconds ahead of Science and Russell. Beautiful. There he is. Come on, so close. I'm so close. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Come on, let me get onto the back of them. Basically, I'm chasing Stroll at the moment because Leclerc is matching me. So as long as Leclerc doesn't get past, I will get onto the back of this train. We 
need to focus on burning my tires to get there. <laughs> Nothing left. Ah. Can't push fuel anymore. I've got no battery left to push. Falling behind because Stroll's now upped his pace to try and stay away. Oh no, it's so frustrating. Tire temps are getting out of control. I've got to calm them down. Damn it. Just got to hope that Stroll and Leclerc start squabbling and slow each other down. Give me a chance to just catch them up naturally. I've got a back marker in front, that is Norris. Who is limping around with damage from that uh, turn one collision with Max. Stroll pumps in a 128.4. Ah, damn. It's so frustrating that when you're pushing like crazy and you get just beyond them, you just can't quite get in range and then they start pushing when you've run out of everything and they immediately pull that gap again. Heartbreaking. Best I can hope for now is that Norris plays spoiler. And catch him in an awkward spot. And it's going to slow him down through Maggots and Beckets. Oh, is he going to spoil it for me? out of Leclerc. Girl's gone again. I've still got to save a little bit of fuel. Looks like our win streak might be coming to an end. We won in Austria, we won in Montreal, we won in Barcelona and Monaco. Uh, I think we won in Imola and Miami. I'm not sure about Miami. I know we won Baku. Leclerc's caught back up again. And that's because Stroll's had a poor lap. We've got a yellow flag. It's a spin, it's not affecting us. It's a Ferrari, it's Russell. Big spin for Russell. He's dropping loads of positions. And for the crew watching on in the garage, that really must have been a hard one to take. Yeah, Russell down to 10th place now. Almost out of tyres, but I've got to try and close up again while the opportunity's there. If you could push a bit harder and try and get up to him, let's see. I can just get onto the back of him for this DRS zone. Then I can save that fuel, I can save the tyres, I can try and get a little bit of battery back in the car. It's going to be close, just missed the DRS. Got to hope that uh, Stroll stays ahead. Range. 
Now I've got to stay in range. Comfortable to push. Copy. Use everything. Yep. Shit. That might have just cost me that indecision for a moment there. Did I get in? No, I didn't. Alright, come on. Hold him up, hold him up, hold him up. Eyes are almost gone. Back off. Copy. Please stay in range. Need to focus on getting the pack up. Copy. Four laps to go. Four laps. I might have cooked these tyres too hard. All right, we've got the DRS. I'm going to ignore Mick. He's too far behind to do anything. He's too far ahead to be troubled. I'm into the slipstream Focus range the now. And this car is really aero efficient. This is going to be a really, really tense last couple of laps. Three laps to go. Three to go. Do everything you can, mate. Perfect. I've got the DRS, he's going to stay ahead, it's a yellow flag. Now we can see Mistake what for science, that takes the Here pressure off Mickey even more. And that won't help their chances. Fighting with the... No saving required. Yep. to go. Copy. Push the tyres now. Yep. Ugh, drama, drama, drama. Energy if you need it. Copy. We can push more. Copy.
we can push a bit more. Yeah. Okay. We can just focus on charging the pack. Ooh, it's just gonna go right down to the wire. Back off now. is available. We're good to push. There we go. We got the move done. <laughs> oh man. Lovely stuff. Good job. Don't run out of fuel. Don't run out of fuel. Please don't run out of fuel. <laughs> Running out of fuel, but winning the race. Oh, that's glorious. And there's Mick. He's got P4. The win. I can't believe we won that. Okay, that is the checker flag. You finished in P4. Oh, I had to work so hard for that one. Thank you. Oh, man. Russell's going to finish outside the points. Look at that fight there for the final spot. Four cars fighting in the end for 10th place. Joe just stealing a point for Mercedes. Ooh-wee. There is Mick poofling around. But it's that man there who had a mighty fight at the end. And that is 26 more points over Max tonight. Now, wasn't it an excellent showing from Oscar Piastri? An inspired strategy from the team there. What a well-deserved win that was. The team has been waiting patiently there, and you can see just how much it means to each and every one of them. The man from down under, Oscar Piastri, heads up to our podium. It almost feels like it doesn't need saying after a seventh win, but another stunning performance today. Seven well, we wins Britain, from 11 for Oscar this season. With a cup of tea tonight, they'll be staying true to Formula One tradition. And down there in the Alpha Tauri garage, Karun, what would they be making of that race, do you think? They'll be absolutely delighted to have picked up the win here. What a great outcome that is for the team. And here in Silverstone, the weekend now draws to a close. Next round, we're moving on to an exhilarating circuit. Formula One will be taking to the Hungaro Ring for the Hungarian Grand Prix. There we go. Confirmation of the final result. It is a win for Oscar Piastri, which did not look on with about 10 laps to go. Uh, or even with five laps to go, it was a bit iffy. But uh, we managed to get onto the back of them just. And from there, it was just manage, attack, manage, attack, manage, attack. And we <laughs> just pulled it off with just a couple of corners to go. Uh, a great result for Stroll taking second. That's more points taken away from Red Bull. And uh, the fastest lap for Schumacher in fourth. Down a couple of places, missing out on the podium, but it's his own stupid fault. So uh, if he hadn't had that five-second penalty, we could have pushed him and he would have been up there as well, you know, for the podium fight. Maloney, what a great race for him. Up seven places and finishing in fifth. That's big points for Haas.
massive points for Haas. Sainz takes sixth, Perez in seventh, Albon in eighth, Magnussen in ninth. A couple of more points for Williams. They desperately need those. And uh, Joe gets another point for Mercedes, but they are still going to be rock bottom in the uh, constructors. If we look at the bottom half of the driver standings, they see Russell at spin costing him badly. He was in a fight for fourth, sorry, for fifth. And they ended up in 11th place thanks to that spin. Uh, decent result for Gasly, up six places. For sure, up seven, although there were four cars taken out. Uh, Bottas gaining three places. Giovinazzi gaining four. Norris uh, just limping uh, for the uh, for the race. Damage sustained in that collision with Max on turn one that brought out the red flag that saw Verstappen, Ocon, Porsche and Hajar all retire while Norris was able to kind of carry on. Let's take a look at the driver's standings. Oscar, 25 points, and he is now leading his teammate, who has also managed to jump Max Verstappen. We now have a 1-2 in the driver's standings. 247 points for Oscar, 158 for Mick. That is a 87-point gap. No, what am I talking about? That's... uh, 89 point gap and uh, it's 87 points no wait brain is not working yes it's 89 points to Mick 91 points to Max in the uh, driver's standings Charles Leclerc is in fourth closing the gap on his teammate 30 points behind him now no points for George he stays fifth but Stroll Climbs a couple of places with that podium position there above his teammate and Norris, both of whom failed to score tonight as well. Uh, Sainz moves above his teammate once again. We're seeing the Alpine drivers swapping places with each other. We saw that with Gasly and Ocon uh, for a few seasons in a row where they were very close to each other in the standings. It's the same again, but with new drivers this year. Uh, let's have a look further down. Points for Magnussen and Perez, but they stay 11th and 12th. Ocon 13th, 14th for Giovinazzi. Maloney up five places with those 10 points. His first points of the season. And that puts him all the way up to 15th place in the standings. Porsche is demoted down, as is Hajar, for sure. Bottas and Joe is now off the mark. All drivers now have at least one point. In the constructors' standings, we have 40, 405 points against 282 for Red Bull. That is a 123-point lead. Love it. Love it. Big, big gap to Red Bull. Ferrari in third are uh, 152 points behind Red Bull and tied with Aston Martin. Uh, Ferrari have had a win this season, uh, which is the only reason they are holding on to third right now. Uh, Big points for Aston with that uh, podium for Stroll. Alpine pick up some decent points. They are just five away from hitting double digits and have opened a bit of a gap now. 21 points to McLaren. Two points for Williams. Uh, They're on 45. They're in kind of no man's land at the moment. But uh, big points for Haas. He's going to move up into eighth place, nearly doubling their total. Alfa Romeo don't get a point. They drop down to ninth. And that second point for Mercedes sees them uh, still bottom, but only by eight points now, not nine. Into the pit stop challenge. Oscar had the quickest stop with a 2.1. Mixed 2.3 second stop was good enough for third. No stop for Max because he didn't get past turn one. So uh, big point gain over Rebel in the constru- in the pit stop standings. Uh, good result for Ferrari tonight as well. Two cars, fourth and fifth. And then points for McLaren, Mercedes, Aston Martin, Alpine and Aston Martin. Still no points for Williams or Haas or Alfa Romeo, it would seem. Yep. And we have a 52-point lead over Red Bull now in the pit stop competition. Not a huge gap. That can change very quickly. I mean, we scored 40 points tonight. Uh, But, uh, you know... That's how quickly things can change in the standings. It's uh, very possible that Red Bull will start pulling out some monster stops again. There you see our two stops. 
And of course, our driver report cards. Let's take a look. Uh, nine successful overtakes, six failed in, uh, for Mick. 14 successful defenses, seven failed. Again, slightly different, uh, slightly conflated numbers because we did have our drivers for a little while in uh, high attack, low defend. Uh, Oscar, seven successful overtakes, 13 failed, and 13 successful defenses, and seven failed, flipping the numbers slightly. Not too bad. And we did get a bit of extra experience for Ollie at his home track as well. He's an 84 overall, and he's still uh, just a rookie. And when he gets into a car, he's going to have a really, really strong start. And if we go to Mercedes, I will be poaching Ollie to go into the car, I think. As far as the sponsors go, well, we missed out on the fastest. Uh, oh, we got the fastest lap. Why didn't it give us the money for the fastest lap? We, we got that with Mick. Uh, annoying. Uh, well, we've got the finish position streak done. Uh, we also got the finish position incentive and the Q3 incentive. We did get the fastest lap, although it's taken money away from us. Not like we're really hurting for the cash, so I can kind of let that one go. Um, we got both cars into Q2 and both cars in the top five. Uh, so uh, some good money, 4.1 million added to the bank. The memory media room upgrade is done. And the rear wing research project is done. So we can go ahead and start our rear wing. Oh no. Is our wind tunnel going to break again? Well, let's go ahead and get this done first. <laughs> Um, actually, no, let's have a look. Uh, I, I'm in two minds. If I start it... <sighs> let's let's get it started. All right, so I'm going to pump half of our hours into this. Again, yeah, not looking at massive gains. But, I mean, we have got pretty mighty performance. Um, it's not going to boost us rank-wise, unless maybe if it goes up when we drop this down a bit. Oh, wait, this is research. No, we don't want research. Uh, we want to design a rear wing. There we go, that's more like it. Wondering why the gains weren't very big. So, 2.4 and 32. <coughs> Still not huge gains. Let's uh, take the lifespan down a little bit. Let's go to there. So we are looking a little bit of an improvement in the downforce and the dirty air. hurt to boost the speed a bit well, it's already getting a bit of a speed boost I uh, definitely want to try and boost the dirty air a little bit if I can Let's see if we can maybe squeeze a touch more no, I'll leave it like that uh, so that'll be our, our wing. That'll give us a little bit of speed, a little bit of a boost to the DRS, which is already pretty strong. Theoretically, I could take a little bit more performance out of the uh, DRS, couldn't I? Uh, do that. Yeah, let's go with that. So our DRS is already very strong. Definitely strongest on the grid. Uh, a little bit more speed is always good, um, especially with Monza coming up and uh, getting the uh, downforce boost and the dirty air boost is definitely a nice little thing to do as well. Do I really want to maybe strip a bit more weight out of it? No, I'll play it safe. All right. So, let's see. 
assuming that we have no problems with our wind tunnel, which we almost certainly are about to have problems with our wind tunnel, uh, we want this for Monza. I'm going to put on three engineers, assuming that we're going to lose 10 days. That will give us nine days to produce three wings, which is doable. Uh, we're going to go with a normal approach. Not going to rush it. We're not going to uh, go intense. Get that done. And we were looking at maybe doing a new chassis as well. So let's get another research project going. Let's do another suspension up, uh, research project. No hours, no changes to the sliders. Two engineers, there we go. Am I live tomorrow? Yes, I plan to be live tomorrow. Uh, right, let's see what needs to be replaced. A rear wing, done, and a suspension, done. And a rear wing again, uh, a side pod, and another suspension. Okay, so we're a little low on spare parts now. Rear wing should be good. We've got three races until Monza. I'd like to try and hold off, but they only take three days to make. So if we do need to replace one, then we've got time replace one we can always drop a car down a spec if necessary rather not do that but we'll see uh suspension though we are going to have to make a couple more of these so let's get those into production what about side pods yeah, I'm going to need another side pod. There we go. Right. Uh, sporting change regulations. Uh, it's going to really, really hit us in the winter. Though. Big, big changes. Wants to really reward the crap teams. Um, part of me wants to do it make next season a bit more challenging if we stay it also would make it a bit more easy if we end up going to Mercedes um, but I'm not going to uh, I don't if we do go to Mercedes they don't want to be too easy and having a lot of hours available would make it a bit easier so we'll vote against we'll leave the changes as they are memorabilia room upgrade done uh, yeah, we can shut down for eight days. We can, we planned in a contingency for, for 10. I will shut down for eight because it'll be like double that and a, an expense if we do have a fault and stay open. Right. But 11.8 mil in the bank. Uh, nothing that needs our attention. No, we're all good. See what the board thought of that. Uh, they were delighted with Silverstone. Uh, it's been a monster season for us. Uh, let me have a look at that win streak that we are on. So obviously we won here at Silverstone. Uh, we won at Spielberg. We've got a one-two at Spielberg. Uh, we won at Montreal. Got a double podium. We won with a one-two at Spain. A 1 2 at Monaco, a 1 2 at Imola. Uh, so we didn't win Miami. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 wins in a row for Oscar and the team. And obviously, Oscar won at Baku as well. So Mick yet to get a win, uh, but he has had quite a few podiums. Let's see, he's had one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven podiums for Mick this season. Seven wins for Oscar. Six in a row. Let's see how long can we keep that win streak going. And 
will be very interesting to see how good we're going to be at Hungary's. Definitely a track that's going to need more downforce. Not a huge amount of overtaking opportunities around that circuit. Certainly turns one and two are our best efforts for overtaking. Well, is it turn two or, ten, or is it turn three? It depends whether they count that little kink uh, after, you know, on the second DRS straight there. But uh, we've got a very, very, very good car right now. And I am certainly hopeful that we can uh, be in contention for the win, if not, you know, outright for the win. But uh, Red Bull are looking quick again. You know, they dipped a little bit, but... Uh, they are certainly there or thereabouts, and Stroll has come along a little bit in the last couple of races as well. So it's not necessarily going to be an easy race for us. Not going to be anything like it was at uh, Monaco or, uh, or Barcelona. But uh, we should get a very good result tomorrow. So, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's race. If you have, then uh, yeah, please drop a like. You know, Feel free to subscribe. You know, if you want to keep up to date with this series, we do try and stream every night of the week, you know, Monday to Friday. Uh, I will be back at the usual time tomorrow of 8 p.m. Until then, thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with more F1 Manager very soon.